Welcome back. My name is Marcus Wiesaw, and I will be your facilitator for this toolbox talk on OSHA's Focus 4 for falls. And if you're unfamiliar with what OSHA's Focus 4 is, there are four categories where OSHA states that employees are most likely to get killed as a result of. So these focus four categories are number one being falls, number two, electrocution, number three, struck by hazards, and finally, caught in or caught between hazards. So today, we're just going to focus on the focus four for falls. And if you'd like to contact me about this, feel free to do so. My information is listed on the screen. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I'm going to do is present some photographs to you that have been provided by OSHA. So, I didn't take these photographs, I didn't make these observations. And if you go on OSHA's website, you can find this uh, presentation with all the pictures in it and so many more resources. You just have to look around. And if you're unfamiliar, that website is OSHA.gov. That's O S H A.gov. So what I'm doing is just kind of narrating through these and kind of providing you with a toolbox talk on some of OSHA's observations. So that being said, I believe that some of the best resources actually come from the agency. So I like to use them whenever possible. So let's go ahead and get started. Is this a fall hazard? So what you see here, if you look at the photograph, as you see, looks like three people there that have been climbing on some steel beams and they do not have any type of fall protection, fall protection, or fall arrest. So what OSHA says is that ladders or man lifts should be provided in this scenario and they're absolutely correct. Look how awkward these guys are working. It's just very difficult to get anything done when you're holding on like that. And the other comment OSHA made is that Workers could fall while climbing on, on the shoring structure to set it up and remove it. So a lot of problems there, a lot of danger. I'm sure many of you are probably chuckling right now because you've seen this time and time again. And you shouldn't. Now you know that you're not allowed to work like that. What about here? Common construction site. Uh, you'll see this on pretty much any construction site. Sorry, OSHA, but it is true. I, I do make these site visits frequently. and I. I see these kind of circumstances all the time. But what is OSHA's chief complaint with this? What is the danger? What's the hazard? Well, it's pretty simple. We see an employee working near a leading edge there, and there's the potential to fall more than six feet. And anytime we have that potential to fall more than six feet, OSHA says we have to protect employees. Now, fall protection is kind of complicated, so there are many ways that we can accomplish that. So don't think that you just put a harness on necessarily and tie off to you know, some kind of anchor point. We could put up handrails. We could do a lot of different things. So let's not focus on that right now. But if you do have questions, let me know. And we're moving on. Is this a fall hazard? Yes, it is. And I know it's a little harder to see. But what we have is we have a couple of individuals working on and near these trusses on this residential construction site. And again, what OSHA is saying here for their comments is that we have an unprotected, open-sided floor uh, six feet or more above ground level. So again, OSHA is reverting back to that six-foot rule. Can't, I, I can't emphasize that enough. Whenever an employee has the potential to fall more than six feet, we have to do something about it. So OSHA suggests guardrail systems, safety net systems, or personal fall arrest systems. Any one of those kind of uh, solutions would, would work very well to protect employees from falls. What about here? OSHA says, any fall hazard here? Yes, and this is something that you can just drive around in your nearby town or city and see all the time. You'll, you'll see people working at heights because that's where a lot of work is. So we see two people here on a, on a roof and... The roof is looks like some kind of fabricated steel or something like that. And if you've ever been on those kind of 
roofs they're very slippery all it takes is the the slightest amount of dust or even dew from the morning or any kind of moisture and it is just slippery so for these guys to be up there with no fall protection that's really dangerous i don't recommend it and these guys are putting their life and limb in uh, significant risk so don't ever do that again let's go back to that six foot rule okay anytime we have that potential to fall six feet we have to have some kind of fall prevention or protection system in place what about this particular scenario so typically what we're after in these kind of uh, situations is we like to see a standard guardrail system in place okay where we have a top handrail at about 42 inches we have a mid rail about 20 to 22 inches and then we have a tow board which should be flush with the surface of the of the walking working surface that is and that should be about four inches but we don't see that here and so osha has a couple of comments here so they're saying that this potential scenario could expose workers to a 12 foot fall okay now, I talked about tow boards, and tow boards are going to be flush again with the walking working surface, and we want those to be about four inches uh, in, in width. And other than that, we see that there's a potential here for a fall again. So let's go ahead and move on. Can you identify the fall hazard here? OSHA asks. Yes. We have a pretty significant problem here. We have a safety standard for scaffolding, whereby the established OSHA rule is that anytime we have employees working on scaffolding and the scaffolding is, would lead to a fall greater than 10 feet, well, we've got to protect employees from that fall. So we can do that with cross braces, and there's some specific rules on cross braces that kind of mimic that handrail rule we just talked about at 42 inches, but I believe we get a little bit of leeway there. I think it's 38 to 45 inches where that intersection of the cross brace has to meet. I'd have to double check that, but I'm pretty confident we're in that range. I always shoot for 42 inches because I know we'll, we'll be good with that. And we have a significant hazard here. You'll notice that we have a bunch of cinder blocks stacked up on the scaffolding. A lot of people get injured on scaffolding because the scaffolding's overloaded. And it's really easy to do that because what we have is we have these extend boom forklifts that are just really, really convenient in the construction industry. And all our materials are put conveniently on pallets. So we just get a forklift operator to put those pallets right on top of that scaffolding for us. And we just stack those up time and time again. Happens frequently. Happens all the time. But as a result, we can overload our scaffolding. And when that happens, we actually expose workers to a fall. Because if the scaffolding... These wooden planks here, if they should fall or, or if they should break, rather, what we have is we have the potential for an employee to collapse with the overloaded scaffolding. So, very interesting indeed. Here are OSHA's comments. So, again, we don't have any fall protection or fall prevention for the workers working on the scaffolding. Uh, I like the hesitant language here, but OSHA is absolutely correct. Planks appear to be overloaded, and there's no safe access for workers. So what does that mean? It means we'd have to calculate the load capacity for those wooden planks and measure that against the weight per square foot of the, uh, of the cinder blocks there. But we don't know. It's probably accurate that the planks are overloaded, though. All right. And then OSHA's last comment is the workers are exposed to a 35-foot fall hazard from a scaffolding while stacking blocks prior to overhand bricklaying operations. Okay. So they didn't like this at all. And we're moving on. I know you guys are chuckling at this one because we never see this throughout the construction industry, right? Can you identify the fall hazard? Hmm, gee, I don't know. Yes, you can. It's very obvious. And by the way, caution tape or danger tape is not an accurate or safe kind of barricade that doesn't prevent people from falling over like a handrail would. So never do that in place of a more uh, durable kind of solution. So ladders uh, 
need to extend three feet past the working surface. Now, this is what I like to call OSHA candy. OSHA will cite this almost every single time. If you get a compliance officer out there and they're looking at ladders, you better have that ladder extend three feet from the working surface. Very big chief complaint for OSHA. So here we see a ladder that's not long enough. And sometimes we have ladders that are too long. So keep that in mind as well. Is this a fall hazard? Yes, absolutely. Now I have to pick on painters for a second because painters almost always have this problem. So this is very interesting to me, but uh, this is very common. And I see people working on step ladders on the top rung all the time, and that's a big no no. So workers are not allowed to use the top of a step ladder under any circumstances. So keep that in mind. What about here? What do we see? Okay. OSHA is going to have a lot of problems with this one. Okay, so we have an employee that looks like he's monitoring or supervising the situation below, and he has no personal protective equipment on, like a hard hat or maybe steel toe boots. Doesn't look like it. They look like tennis shoes to me. And then we have some makeshift scaffolding up there that doesn't look like it. It would be within. Uh, within standard we have improper access we have uh, a worker inside uh, nearby the guy working on that wooden plank there and he's exposed to a fall hazard so we've got all kinds of problems here no handrails no personal protective equipment and falls uh, for two employees fall hazards for two employees so we've got some pretty big issues and we're moving on these two guys crack me up because they look really, really busted there, don't they? They're like, who's taking a picture of us down there? Well, it turns out it was probably an OSHA compliance officer. So we've got some problems here. So you see these guys, they're out there on a balcony that looks like it's under construction nearby some scaffolding. You can see a bunch of uh, metal beams and rods that they could fall on underneath and Again, we have that potential to fall more than six feet, so OSHA is going to have a problem with that. We must protect people from falls at six feet or greater. That's the rule. Get it in your head. This picture also cracks me up as well because we've got an individual here that knows he needs to wear some kind of fall protection or fall prevention and equipment, but he says, Hey, yeah, I got an idea. Why don't I just tie a rope around my waist and then tie off to say a tree or the hitch of my pickup truck or something then I'll conduct my work. Well that's not exactly going to work either. So the employer must provide a full body harness and the reason for that is that's what it's designed to do. If this person were to fall with this rope around his, around his uh, waist he could probably just snap his back in two or have a wide array of different other problems. So just be aware of that. If you see something as ridiculous as this, try to educate a person about what needs to be done because this is absolutely asinine. Okay, here again we have another picture. This is an individual working on scaffolding, obviously above 10 feet. So we have no fall protection uh, for this individual or engineering control measures rather that uh, uh, would mean handrails. Uh, mid rail and a tow board or even cross braces in this case if that's more appropriate so uh, same standard as before and just another example of that this presentation has been produced by mw consulting my name again is marcus Weesaw, and if you have any questions about this quick cool box talk on falls uh, please let me know there's my contact information listed on the screen and as always, thank you very much to the agency that is OSHA for providing us with very valuable pictures and PowerPoint presentations. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.